technical engineer in design. So we are going to to resolve a problem or a couple of problems related with the stability of unsupported slopes using the circular failure mechanisms exclusively. So in previous videos, we saw that um, there is a theory behind the slope stability study that uh, allowed us to face these problems in a, in a practical way. So in the first place, we need to understand that soils are, can be under compression and they are good taking compressive forces. Uh, under tension, um, they, uh, soils are not able to, 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 to take uh, tens, tensile forces because the nature of the soil is basically uh, a material that is natural and is, is formed by particles that are not necessarily bonding one to each other and there is water involved as well that change the strength of the soil so basically soils are very bad taking tension tension in, in any case and the shear stresses shear stresses are an intermediate uh, state between compression and tension for soil so a soil can take certainly uh, um, an important amount of shear stresses and basically soil fails when some shear stresses strength is rich and this is the reason why the shear stresses are the most important stresses in soil mechanics. So the mechanism of failure for slopes is a mechanism of rotation that we, we, uh, we saw some examples in the previous video where if we apply a force, an eccentric force on a mass of soils, sooner or later we are going to develop a circular or a non-circular line where the constant uh, there where we are going to have concentration of deformation and stresses shear stresses in particular and when we reach the strength of the soil in terms of shear stresses we are going to uh, see a rotational mechanism where we are going to reach on this line the maximum shear stress that they able the, the soil is able to take in slope stability this is what happened exactly so you have on a slope you have um, let's say the self way of the slope or an additional load you can increase until you develop this uh, failure circular line in this particular case and you produce the rotational mechanism that make the slope fail because you reach on this failure line maximum deformation or concentration of deformation and concentration and maximum value of stresses that are over the, the strength of the soil. So um, the main mechanism we are going to use to study the slope stability in two dimensions are a rotational mechanism around the uh, center O because uh, this is the, the, the line where the failure will be produced and where we are going to have a resistance in terms of the strength of the soil and in form of the she of a shear stress. So basically, if we consider exclusively the self weights of the slope, we are going to have a disturbing moment produced by these weights multiplied by the distance to the center of rotation. And we're going to have a restoring moment produced by this strain of the soil on this line of failure multiplied by the distance to the center O as well. Um, so we need to evaluate these two moments in order to define uh, what, is, what is our safety factor uh, that is defined as the relation between the moment, the disturbing moment, uh, over the restoring moment. If we have a water table, as is in the figure, this line here represents a water table with water um, that is uh, moving around the, the, the soil, we are going to, uh, we need to ask the water pressure as a, as a variable or as a data to run our calculations and we are going to see how to deal with this in a practical example. So, uh, as usual, the presence of water uh, make more complex the problem. And remember that when we have water, we have an effective stress that is uh, the difference between the total stress produced by the cell weight in this case, minus the water pressure. So, in order to be practical, we need to mention the Euro codes because uh, in order to have certain uh, sense of safety, we need to follow advices from codes and from standards to, to let's say, to, to be safer in some way. So for the Euro code, that is a code that we apply for this sort of calculations, establish that there are 
for example, for geotechnical problem, two scenarios, uh, the design approach one, combination one, or the design approach one, combination two, in this case. And this second is the, um, the scenario that the Eurocop recommend for geotechnical problems in particular. And for slope stability, this is the scenario that we usually use to determine the safety factor. So for design approach one and combination two, we need to use uh, the coefficients A2 for uh, partial, uh, for actions. And we have in here the table for actions and the factors and A2 is the second column. For resistances, we need to use um, R1, which is in here in resistances table. The first columns of this table will be used in our problem. And finally, for material properties, we need M2, which is the second column of this third table in here to um, affect the material properties of our soils. So the principle of Eurocopter or any standard actually is to uh, keep our structure safe and safer than if we don't use any, uh, any coefficient. So these coefficients have the mission to increase the actions to be safer and to have a better safety factor and to reduce the material properties, the actual material properties to be safer and reduce the resistances uh, to be safer. In terms of resistances, as you see here, um, because this is general, it's not only for, for a slope stability. Um, for example, it's mentioning here the bearing resistance for foundation, the sliding resistance for other structures and the earlier resistance are affected by coefficient equal to one. So the, there is not any difference at the end for this design approach one and combination two. In terms of material properties, what we need to do is to divide the, the actual material properties by the coefficients uh, advised by the Euro code, because we need to uh, reduce these uh, material properties to be safer. And in terms of action, we need to multiply for these uh, coefficients that are uh, the advice from the Euro code in order to increase the value of the actions and to uh, increase the, the safety of our structure. So these are the coefficients we're going to use and I'm going to show in more details in an example. So let's say we have to resolve this problem of the slope stability. So we have a slope and we need to define the, or determine the safety factor. And the soil that is involved in this problem is a clay. So the, the, there is a clay slope that's shown in the figure. And we have to use as well a, some, a method called the method of slices. So the method of the slices is a method that divides the slope and over the, the line where we suppose the failure will, will be produced in several slices to run the calculations, a slice at a slice instead of run the calculation in the whole slope. So the clay that formed the slope has a unit weight of 22 kN per cubic meter. This is the specific weight of the soil in this problem. And the unrained shear stress, because this is a clay, is equal to 49 kilonewton per square meter. This is a stress and this is the strain of this particular clay for this particular problem and the conditions are undrained. The, the, the dimensions uh, of the slices are provided in this table. You can see here, so all of this is data. So you have the uh, width of every single slice. You have 10 slices in total. And these are the heights, the average height of, the, of every slice. And these are the angles, the angles at the base of every slide that will be useful to run certain calculations. So I mentioned that the, um, the situation is undrained. This is because clays, when they are saturated, they are usually impervious. Um, so the, the method of the slices for um, a, a slow stability problem like this uh, provide a formula to establish the, um, the safety factor. And this formula say that the safety factor is equal to the summation from one to n, where n is the numbers of the number of slices. So this summation will be from one to 10 uh, of the clay strain multiplied by the width of every slide divided by the cosine of alpha. And all of these, this summation has to be over the summation from one to 10 again, because n is the number of the slices, multiplied by the weight of the slice, multiplied by the sine of alpha. 
This is the reason why we use this table in here to um, find the, the value of this summation in the numerator and this summation in the denominator. So what we do is we take the, the data from the table that was provided for the problem. We have as well the value of the unit weight of the clay. We have the strength of the clay in here. And because the Euro codes advise to reduce the, resist, uh, the, the, the soil properties, the material properties, this is what we are doing in here. So we are going to go back to the tables of Euroco, as you see, the material property, a material property like the cohesion, for example, or no cohesion, the ungrained shear strength exude, which is the material property we have for this problem, is affected by, by a coefficient 1.4 to reduce this, these properties in order to be safer. So in this case, we use this, um, uh, this uh, coefficient here to reduce 49, which is the data we have at the beginning. And we found that the, the value we're going to use for the calculation is equal to 35. And 35 will be our, um, our undrained strength for the clay. We are going to use in the formula in here. So um, these are the data, as I said, these are the width, the height, and the angles. So the first value we calculate for every slice is the weight, which is equal to B times H, which is the area of the slice multiplied by the unit weight. And we start having all these values just multiplying this column by this column and multiplying by 22, which is the unit weight. After that, in order to, to have the denominator of this formula, we can multiply W uh, times the sine of alpha that we have in this third column in our table, a four column, and we obtain all these values in here. So basically, these values are um, the terms of the denominator of our formula for the method of the slices in here. So the summation of this column, 463, will be the denominator for this formula. For the numerator, what we do is we multiply the undrained strain of the clay, which is data and is 35, and we multiply by B, which is in here, and divide by the cosine of alpha, alpha is in here, and we obtain all these values. Doing the summation of this column, we are going to find the numerator of this formula and after doing the, in here, 1.4 is the, the safety factor, the division between 660 divided by 464, we obtain the safety factor for this uh, particular slope and for this particular problem. So the method, the method of the slices is, is, is very simple and it's, um, it's a very good idea to use a table like this to run the calculations. And as you see, this is very, very simple to program in a, in a spreadsheet, for example, to, to have a, a, a very simple software or program to resolve this kind of problems. So evidently in this problem, which is extremely simple, there is no water involved because we don't see any water pressure. So we consider that the soil is, is, is dry in some way and there is no any uh, water pressure produced in the, in the, in the slope. In the next exercise, uh, uh, the next exercise is different in this sense because we have water pressure as information as you can see in here, in here and basically it's the same sort of slope with the same number of the slices, but we need to determine, determine the safety factor now. Uh, there is a mistake in here with the figures I will correct after. So the soil that formed the slope has a unit weight of 22 kN per cubic meter, a cohesion of 40 3.75 kilonewton per um, square meters, and the angle of internal the angle of internal friction phi is equal to 30.2 um, degrees. So we are not having a clay in this case. So we have a, a drain condition now because this is uh, a soil which is a mixture between clay and sand. So the dimension of the slices are provided in the in the table as well as the water pressure for every slide that was measured uh, securely for um, in, the, in the field. So this is the now the, the method of the slice uh, of the slices for soil mixtures. So the formula is a little bit more complicated because we need to include the cohesion, we need to include the angle of internal friction, but the procedure is exactly the same. 
we have a more complex numerator for the safety factor, which is a summation from 1 to 10, again, because 10 is the number of the slices, and the denominator is the same as in the method before. So we have as a data now the um, unit weight, we have the cohesion, and we have the angle of internal friction. And uh, I think, let me just check something. Okay, these angles of internal frictions are affected already by the coefficients from the Eurocode. So if you see the original ones, are 40, the equation is 43.75 and the angle of internal friction is 30.2. And after the application of the state of the coefficient for the euro code, 1.25 in this case, and 1.25 in this case as well for the angle of internal friction, we have reduced the two um, the two values to 35 for the cohesion and 25 degrees for the angle of internal friction. These are the values we're going to use that are reduces already uh, following the advice of the euro code. So we have B, H, alpha, and U, the water pressure in here. So in order to get these values in blue, which are the values calculated, we have to use these formulas. Basically, the weights for every slide is B times H times the unit weight. Uh, multiplying by the sign of alpha, these are the values we obtain, and doing the summation of this column, we obtain the denominator of our formula for the safety factor. Applying this more complex formula for every slice, we obtain these values, and this is the cohesion, which is uh, 35, this is B, which is for every slide equal to 2, cosine of alpha is for every alpha, this is the weight, this is the cosine of alpha, this is the, the water pressure we use for every slice, we have information in here. And again, the angle of internal friction is always the same, equal to 25 degrees, so the tangent of 25 degrees uh, has to be calculated. So after the calculation of these uh, numbers, we have all this column, and if we do the summation of this column, we have the numerator of the formula for establishing the safety factor. So the safety factor for this particular um, slope is equal to 1.5, uh, 1.8, sorry. And if you remember for the other exercise, it was 1.4. So let's go back to the last exercise now to comment something about the safety factor. A safety factor, remember, is a concept that gives us an idea of uh, how safe we are in terms of failure. Having a safety factor of 1.8 in a problem, in a, in a situation or in a problem related with your technical engineer is not actually a very good safety factor depending on the, of the situation. Um, we have in here a sort of 80% of security that we are 80% far from the failure. But remember that this calculation is for a particular situation with a particular a particular um, location of the water table, for example, that produce this, uh, this uh, water pressure. And in reality, in geotechnical problems, because they are problems where the soil is involved, the soil is a natural material that is exposed to the environmental variables, the water table will change the position um, seasonally during the season, producing changes in the, in the water pressure and then producing changes in the safety factor. So in reality, it's not um, enough the calculation of one situation. We need to try to cover all the possible situations along a year, at least, and um, and run calculations, several calculation of safety factor, and take the minimum safety factor as the valid safety factor to say how safe is the structure. So the calculation of safety factor is a serious matter because it will um, uh, give us an idea of how. Uh, safe is our structure. So this is all in this presentation. Thank you very much for